shine on my head. Are we good? All right. I don't step away. What I'm saying is where we're at. I'm dealing with Is that it? For the shine on my head. <laughs> or my forehead. I don't step away. All right. Well, we got some spoken word happening behind us, so we're going to just kind of set that and hope that our volume is right. Fabian, how are you? Lewis, Welcome I'm great. back. You good? I'm great. All right. Welcome back to uh, Rope It Up TV, episode five. Uh, we're just having so much fun doing this, uh, um, and I hope people are enjoying uh, watching it. And uh, we do something a little different so that people can watch the uh, video and set the time markers. Fabian, let's uh, tell us what we're what we're covering today. Yeah, we got a couple things that we're covering. So we're going to cover some new music from Nick Payton. On Paytone Records. Paytone Records is, a, is is now affiliated with rope dope We're handling all the distribution and marketing. That's Nick's label. I love that. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're specifically going to be talking about his new album entitled Afro-Caribbean Mixtape. That's yes. coming out in 2017. February. Mm-hmm. We got that. We also have David Weiss and Point of Departure that we're going to speak about. Senora Langosta from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, and uh, as well as Ali Howe from London. Yep. So I'm excited about that. And um, I also want to break it down. I want Lewis to speak to, you know, surviving in the music business um, and also politics in music and transforming suffering to joy. So that's going to be a personal. That's a sound bite right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. There's a reason for that. We're going to talk about that a, a little bit later. Um, Let me jump in here real quick uh, and say that, um, talk a little bit about the music. What we're listening to right now is an unreleased track from Nicholas Payton entitled Jazz is a Four-Letter Word. Uh, That's going to speak to some of the politics that we're going to discuss here tonight. When I say politics, I, I really, I don't mean politics in the American traditional sense about who's being elected but just uh, social uh, justice and, uh, you know, things that are happening in the world and how it affects us. Um, I guess I'm going to cut back to uh, each track as it comes on. How about we do it like that? That makes sense. All right. The shuffling thing is still a thing. So let me give people a, a little a little heads up on, on, on what 2017 looks like first, because uh, I've been pretty uh, busy, and everybody here at Rope It Up has been pretty busy uh, lining things up for 2017. It's stunning to me uh, that the music not only continues to just flow into Rope It Up, but the bar just seems to get raised every year. And... Uh, it almost feels in a way that we're just in a separate lane from the rest of the music business, except that we duck in and out. I do want to mention, as we wrap up 2016, that Terrace Martin's Velvet Portraits, we are so excited to, re- to release that this year. Uh, in fact, tonight we're having a little vinyl party down here at the Rope It Up store because the vinyl is in, as you can see. Uh, but Terrace was nominated for uh, a Grammy for the 2017 Grammys uh, in the category Best R&B Album. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a real achievement, I think, for us that, uh, you know, sort of uh, an obscure jazz label 
uh, who has music that's on the fringes or, or the pro hopefully the progressive fringes of jazz ends up with a nomination for Best R&B Album. We've got some formidable competition out there. Uh, BJ the Chicago Kid and of course Layla Hathaway live. Uh, no disrespect to the others uh, that are nominated. I just can't recall them right now. I think Mint Condition and one more. Um, and the only reason I'm not talking about them is because I just haven't heard those records. So I focus on the ones that I know right out of the gate. Um, but uh, we're excited. We're honored. You know, Terrace Martin continues to amaze us, uh, and we're thrilled for him, uh, and, I, and I hope we win. <laughs> and uh, the good news for Layla Hathaway is that uh, she's on this record as well. Right. So if she, uh, if she doesn't win then, and Terrace does, then she also wins. She'll still be happy. So we're, Have we're you talked to Terrace since uh, the nomination? Just a couple of texts. Okay. Uh, I get the sense that he's, he's uh, pretty busy. You know, there's the Herbie record, there's... Other things in the works that may or may not be public at this point. Um, he just sent me a quick text and he's like, "We did it, bro." You that's know, great. thank you. And of course, I don't. You know, I'm thanking him. Um, that's cool. So uh, we're wrapping up an amazing year. 59 records released. Wow. Uh, you know, I wish each and every one of them had the kind of attention that Terrace does. And you know, that's what we do is we work hard to try to get that cooking. But uh, I do encourage everybody go back, look over, downloads.robodunk.com, listen. I think if you just click play anywhere on that page, you're bound to find something that's uh, that's interesting. So 2017, I mean, it just doesn't end. I'm gonna just throw out some names here. We've got a remix from Light Blue Movers. We've got a record from Robert Brooks and Eric Binder. Spanky McCarty has now been moved to 2017. That's great. If you're a, a regular uh, watcher of this show, you, you know that's been going on. Um, Atlas out of Dublin, uh, Nate Smith out of New York, Nicholas Payton we mentioned, Kin for Life out of Atlanta, Georgia on uh, Artist First Records, David Weiss, Point yes. of Departure, he's from The Cookers, uh, Mark DeClivelo's got a live project coming out on Master Beats Records, uh, Jeremy Daneman's got another project, Senior Langosta, uh, and a few surprises, uh, <laughs> some reggae coming back into the mix. Uh, some rock with Escaper we talked about. Uh, Little Mike Mitchell out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, Stanley Clark's drummer. Uh, Ollie Howe. A uh, couple others that we're not going to quite say yet. Uh, and Trevor Lawrence Jr., drummer, staff writer with Dr. Dre for 20 years. Played Live Aid with Stevie Wonder. Wow. Uh, has a solo project coming out. Uh, and of course, we build up for uh, you know what will be uh, an amazing set of releases, which make one project from uh, Christian Scott. So we're busy. We're very busy. Just a little bit productive. Yeah, productive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's. Um, I you know you mentioned some things in the intro that we, we kind of wanted to talk about a little bit tonight. Mm -hmm. and, uh, just want to see. Well, you know, specifically about this album with uh, with Nick Payton. Uh, you know, I'm excited about it. You know, is there anything that you wanted to touch on in regards to this album coming up? I, I do. Um, that's our that's our uh, our vinyl jacket printer, uh, a who's delivering jackets for uh, the Terrace Martin Velvet Portraits record, and he'll have to wait for a moment. But it's you know it's how we do it here. Uh, and that is on film. There we go. <laughs> okay. Film? Uh, film? Is this film? It's not film, is it? Damn, oh, totally not film. Uh, hey, you know, the, uh, the, the shuffle thing worked. Or it stopped working. That's great. So we went straight through. This is just while you're listening in the background here. This is, you know, our, our, our secret from uh, Puerto Rico, uh, Senor Langosta. Boy, you know, you've heard some of the stuff, right? It's just, it's kind of like that, that 70s fusion, but as only, you know, it, it could have come out of Puerto Rico. It could only have come from Puerto Rico. It's like their, their vibe on that, and I love it when that stuff starts to blend. Um, so, uh, Nicholas Payton, you know, he's one, and probably, an, you know, early and, and at the front of talking about uh, jazz uh, and 
teaching, you know, I just goofed and used that word. Um, Nick talks about black American music, and he talks about jazz, uh, the term jazz be, being an oppressive term. Uh, I never really considered it much, and I have to in my job use that term uh, so that I can communicate with other people, but that's something that we're going to explore as we come through 2017. And I see this kind of stuff happening. It's interesting, you know, um, I just got the program for Winter Jazz Fest, and they talk about the festival's theme this year is going to be social justice wow. and a discussion of, uh, you know, African-American presence and progress or lack thereof here in the United States of America. And as we all know, uh, you know, all of those things that we felt uh, might have been in the past, but were really just under the surface, are all just bubbling right up. And, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, I and people around me are, are nervous about such things because it looks certainly like we're headed in a, in a wrong direction. But I, I'm wondering if it isn't just, you know, it's been there all along and we've been glossing over it and it's go time to, to challenge this and, and uh, you know, sort of the darkest hours right before the dawn theory. That's but, right. you know, what's interesting about it this time and the reason I wanted to talk about it today is that it seems to me that musicians at this point now are even more in the forefront of this discussion very, very and, cool. and dialogue, right? Um, and Nicholas Payton is certainly going to be, you know, an, an unabashed uh, leader uh, in, and going to be, you know, is always very vocal. And I've listened to some of the tracks on, on this record. These records, I should say, it's, it's like a double CD. Yeah. So, so he came out of the studio with a lot of material. And it's going to talk in... You know, with no nothing held back about these issues, and uh, Nate Smith is another. We have a record coming up from Nate, and he is playing at Winter Jazz Fest. He's you know he's talking about the uh, black experience in America wow. through his music. So, and, and and it's clear. In addition, that Terrace Martin's not going to stop talking about it, and and uh, Christian Scott's not going to stop talking about it. You know, th this is uh, and Trevor Lawrence. You know, so. It, it, it feels like an honor and a challenge to be in the middle of this and, you know, to be part of that process. And who knows what, uh, what form it's going to take, but we really do have what I believe to be, you know, the, the, the present and future leaders, uh, you know, bringing this issue out and, and talking about it. And let's all uh, hope we come out on the other side nice and safe <laughs> and, in, and in a better place. I think it's inevitable, but it's a question of, uh, you know, how, how, how much, uh, you know, what are the scars and costs along the way? It's going to be a lot of dialogue and conversation on the other side. And in my, in my opinion, uh, it's great to see the artists come up and uh, be vocal about it. You know, um, I'm listening. That time. In my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, but aren't you nervous? Uh, I, I use that nervous as I, I'm, ex I'm more excited than I am nervous. I'm excited to see. I, I feel that um, people are listening. People are aware of what's going on. They're, they're seeing it. They can't avoid it, right? It's, it's, Anymore. It's, 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 you can't just skip it. It's boom. It's in your face. Yeah, you got to show up. And like everybody has, just showed up. Right. Well, here's where I become scared. You know, me having little guys, me having little kids. That's that's when I feel a little bit nervous. I guess I should say. Yeah. yeah. Um, but for me, where I'm at in my life, I'm I'm excited to see what's what's coming ahead. Well, it's funny because we were talking earlier about the kids, and I I, I do have a per perception, and and I can, I'm gonna sort of throw this right out at the camera to, you know, you hear on the news the millennials, the this, the that, you know, the young people. Um, and people can say, well, thanks a lot, you ruined the world for us, or whatever. It's, your it's, it's always been with every generation, and it will always be with every generation. These, these are your times. Right. You know? Uh, people do the best that they can to try to leave a better thing for their children and a safer environment for the children. But at the end of the day, these are your challenges. You know? That's correct. You're out there if you're between the ages of 15 and, and, and 25, 27, 30, whatever it is. Um, 
you can't opt out of this one. This, this is your thing. This is your life. This is it, you know? No uh, hiding behind keyboards. And let me tie it back together. Pay attention to musicians. They're going to lead the way. That's going to be the thing. And that's that's where uh, you, you mentioned this, uh, because we talked about it as well, and I, I threw this concept out to, to you earlier because it popped in my head in a dream uh, the other night. Uh, just some words, and the words were uh, transforming suffering into joy. And um, I'm like a casual, you know, Buddhist studies kind of guy. Okay. And I listen to uh, Thich Nhat Hanh uh, fairly often, not, not enough, and, and I don't really practice like I should. It's like guided but, meditation. Um, What's that? You know, you really got to dig in uh, with Thich Nhat Hanh, but it's really about being in the present moment and... And, 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 you know, I'm not going to do it justice, and I, I feel even embarrassed to even say it, but my, my, my version, my thought on it, is uh, it's about that you can, you can transform anything in this moment. And it, it's the only time that you can do anything. You transform the past, you transform the future. If you're focused in this moment, hmm. then, then you have that, uh, that, that power and that ability. And also you're alive. Um, so, you know, what hit me in the middle of the night was... Uh, transforming suffering into joy and I you know I'm, I'm not a young man anymore and I look at the things that are happening in the world and you know I'll cry like anybody else about the, 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 the just pure sadness you know we love to have hope and think everything's great and comfortable and wonderful kind of you know what we were just saying about social justice and, and how things are bubbling up um, but if you look clearly and, and see what's out happening in the world, some of the things, the suffering that's going on, the violence, the, 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 the oppression, uh, the greed, the anger, even the, even the real housewives, people are yelling at each other in, the, in a fancy house. And they're upset, you know? Like, what, what is all this stuff? And I think very uh, carefully about it. And, and a lot lately because it occurred to me that Having an elastic mindset about what's happening in the United States uh, right now, and about what's happening in Britain and what's happening in Syria, uh, having an elastic mindset is the survival technique. And you think back on how to, how is somebody fleeing Syria surviving when I stub my toe and I, I don't think I'm gonna make it through the day? You know. So the mind is an elastic instrument. And what hit me at transforming suffering into joy was that. You know, it could very well be possible that that's what our minds, that's what our, uh, uh, the function of every individual is, hmm. is to take in information, see the suffering and the pain, and then find a way to transform that into some sort of positive message of joy. And then it hit me immediately that, uh, this is exactly what music is, at least to me. It's what musicians are doing on a regular basis. So they have inspiration that, and they look at the world and then they turn it into a beautiful piece of music. And I think, you know, I just wanted to mention that. Um, and, you know, I, I think the key is, is uh, especially in this day and age, is, is what is the flow of that process. If that's what your mind is able to do, right. which we know it is, why does it not do it all the time? <laughs> and I think the very simple answer is like, if you load up your coffee grinder or the, or the, or the, 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 the blender and just jam it in with a bunch of stuff and turn it on, it's just like, nothing happens, <laughs> right? So it's about taking in information in, in, a, in, in, a, in a way that, you know, in a limited doses in order to be able to process, process it. it. Wow. And once again, it goes back to music because music helps you take time away from the barrage of negative information that could be coming at you on any given day if you have an internet connection uh, and, and process it. Even if you're just listening to the background while you're reading that horrible story, you know, on, on the news. Rather than the television, quite frankly, you know, or you take the time to actually sit down like many people used to and some still do and listen to an album through, you can 
fine tune that instrument and put yourself in a headspace when you come out and listen to these musicians. Terrace Morgan comes in here. He's a man, you know. I mean, he's he's, he's had a you know he's had a storied life, right? It's right. Been, been challenging, no doubt about it. But all he says is peace and love. Look at his Twitter feed. Peace and love. Peace and love. I love you. You know that's where he gets to. That's an enlightened being, and that is you know what I'm going to strive for, and I'm literally going to encourage people to listen to more music and listen to people who are making it who are doing that as a regular process I mean you know where where, where is that happening anymore is it happening at the church is it happening you know for, for a lot of people it's not so that's, it's out there they got to find it that's my uh, that's my preach of the day <laughs> where are we going here uh, we just listened to Ali Howe new K-N-E-W uh, I'm going to encourage people to tune in to Ali Howe uh, uh, there we go. Hey, we just went one out of order. We're good. Um, say hi to the neighbors. <laughs> Karate class. Um, really excited about Ali Howe. He is in residence at uh, oh, yes. Q, Q's Jazz Cafe, I think, in Dubai. Check that out. Quincy Jones has picked him as a, a favorite drummer. And uh, it's really interesting. I, you know, I've always said I don't know a lot about music, but I'll say um, it surprised me. When a drummer composes something so inter- so so interesting. You know, like it's, it's he's not just playing the drums. He's developing something uh, really interesting. And now we're jumping into um, a piece from uh, David Weiss, and we're gonna print this on YouTube underneath. Because I can't pronounce it. The title of the track. You, you want to give, give it a go? Here we go. Oh, you're just gonna let him read it. You got it. Go, go for it. I don't want to embarrass my my myself or. Oh, I want to see you embarrassed. <coughs> That's why I'm passing this. Sonjas Esquireros. Esquireros. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. Well, Phone All right. Call my mother. Maybe Put it in the show. comments. Put it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> you grew up here in Spanish, though, didn't you? Oh, my goodness. Right. I need to learn Spanish. I need to do it soon. Oh, my How we doing? We got anything else that we, we want to we wanna cover here? We yeah. got, I, I, I think mean, we're getting down to the end here. We, we got a couple of minutes. That was fast. Yeah, I like it. The flow, the flow is there, you know. I, I mean, here's the crazy thing about about working here with Robodope. You know, I'm literally here on, on the inside of the music industry, on the independent record label side of the industry. And I know that people have their impressions of of what it is. You know, TV points in a certain direction. You know, just their life experiences points in a certain direction. But we're living it here in real life. Yep. And and maybe you can paint a picture here, what's going on here at rope at the independent label here, um, and maybe give a new perspective to some of our viewers who may be a little bit off. You know, what's the real deal? Right, right. Well, I, I mean, I, I think it's funny. I think you know, back in episode two or something, we talked about this. You know, because like people, uh, you know, when you tell somebody that you work at a record label or that you run a record label, they're like, "Wow, cool!" <laughs> and then they go, well, "What? What, what, is, what is that?" So, taking that a step further about not even actually knowing what the nuts and bolts are of of a record label, um, let's talk about the impression. Right. So right now, I think that people have an impression that it's a really cool job and you may or may not have, you know, buckets of money and limos running around. Uh, then you tell them it's an independent label and they're like, oh, right. Okay, now we're closer to the truth. You don't have limos out front, <laughs> right? Um, and then they'll ask, like, well, how many releases? And I say 59 releases. And they're like, oh, yeah. so now we're getting yeah, closer. Look. Right, so there's that kind of impression going on. Um, and then you talk about the general perception of what's happening in the music business right now with uh, sales plummeting, streaming taking over, uh, and they go, oh, that must be a really hard job. It's a really difficult job. Um, well, all I can say for the truth is it is a, it is a absurdly difficult. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a job that you... I mean, if you if you do it the way many people do it, and that is have one hit thing that you chase that that covers everything, and then you put out some other records that aren't quite as successful um, for the love of it, 
that's great. We don't do it that way. You know, we have short-term contracts with artists. People, when somebody blows up over here, they'll they'll go somewhere else because someone else is going to offer them probably more money and shinier things. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and if they go for those shinier things, then off they go. We're committed to a more lateral growth and support to put. That's why 59 Records. You know, it doesn't matter if we don't know somebody. If somebody is not known. Uh, if it sounds unique and interesting, then we put it out. So that makes life really, really difficult. And of course, we're battling the, you know, we're battling the, the giants. We're battling iTunes, with Apple Music, with, you know, everybody pushing towards streaming. And yet, at the same time, we need them right. for the artists. Uh, so it's a juggling act. Uh, on the other side, there are expectations of artists. Uh, you know. It's very hard to explain to an artist on a regular basis, uh, to artists on a regular basis, that it's going to be extremely difficult to sell records and you might not sell any at all. And this is not going to change your fortune. And, and have it not, you know, not be your fault because it really isn't. It's not, it's not my fault. I mean, I make mistakes, and sometimes we could have done better with, with a record or an artist. But for the most part, it's the industry and the culture and the way that's going. Um, and it's really important, and I see, you know, time is getting tight. Um, I'll just sum it up. It's challenging. It's difficult. We operate on, on minimal budgets in order to uh, be able to stay in the game and support these artists. Uh, we are constantly trying to figure out how things are changing, how yeah. to get the system, and we're trying to figure out the last and biggest thing, and that is how do we engage the audience more fully in this crazy world of other challenges, movies and video games and television and, and uh, cable and all these series, all there's all kinds of entertainment now that competes with music and what we really need to do is connect with people who value these musicians, who recognize that these are creative people who are really, you know, as challenging as it is for me, it's ten times more challenging for the artists themselves. They got to juggle different jobs and teaching, you know, uh, and 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 put all their dreams on the line right. to to watch the check come in for point zero zero four five because somebody streamed it. You know, <laughs> that it's it's much more challenging for them. But the the key is the real answer in my mind, aside from the tips and tricks and tools and everything that we implement, is how do we get you? How do we get you as an individual to be more engaged with the music? How do we get you to watch something past the first four minutes of this video <laughs> before you get a text? You know, How do we get you more involved? I would love to hear what people have to say about that. Me too. Because we're good on this side. The music is great. There's no, you know, there's no, you can't tell me that it's not as good as. Right. It is as good as. It's better than. So what do we need to do to, to have people put a, this a little higher? On, it doesn't take much. A little bit higher on their value system and <clears throat> stream it more, share it more, buy it more, tell more people about it, spread the word, get in the family and, you know, be a part of it. Be a part of it. So I heard you say multiple times, <coughs> excuse me, streaming versus downloading just to kind of end out maybe in a minute or so you know how was the year for rope -a 59 releases streaming's up downloads down how's rope -a doing going into 2017 download sales are down 70 oh percent streaming is up and and covering much of that but it's very we can't predict what streaming is going to do yet so we don't really we aren't really able to take any uh serious steps forward okay um we wait for the check two and a half months after the end of the month that the streaming happened, and we pay the rent. So we've got all this positive happening, but we have the reality day to day that if you're a record label, independent record label in 2016, 17, no one's going to be surprised if you went out of business. It's challenging. But we know how to do it on a limited budget. This little store, we're doing a lot with a little. We're doing a lot with nothing. So right. we've been through tougher times than this. So I want to be clear about that. It's getting better. And it's getting better in a, in a, in a good way. It's just we still don't know what the future is. And you. we're out. That's a great shot.